From the outside looking in, a family can look completely normal and loving. But behind the scenes, you might see a completely different picture. The parents might be cold, distant, disrespectful, overly demanding, manipulative, or even abusive. If you have experienced this, one or both of your parents could have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm Lisa Blah, therapist, author, and life coach, and today I'm talking about five tactics that narcissistic parents use to manipulate, exploit, invalidate, and demean their children. Unfortunately, children who have narcissistic parents are trained from birth to comply, submit, enable, and be props for their parents' performances. Each child in the family is assigned a role, for example, the scapegoat, golden child, enabler, and each child is conditioned to play their role perfectly. The children are manipulated, controlled, and coerced from the day they're born to meet the narcissistic parent's selfish needs and to supply their false fantasy self and false narrative. Regardless of the role you are assigned, which I will explain in depth in an upcoming video, all of the children are being used to uphold the narcissist's delusional fantasies. Unsurprisingly, children who grow up with a narcissistic parent generally suffer for years, sometimes a lifetime, with low self-esteem, a need for validation and approval, and they typically struggle with maintaining healthy adult relationships, especially romantic ones. So here are five toxic tactics narcissistic parents use to groom each child into being their perfect servant. Number one, narcissists are the masters of insults and microaggressions. Parents with NPD are often very competitive and envious even of their own children, and they will use insults and microaggressions to demean their children to ensure that they never develop a healthy sense of self, good self-esteem, or emotional independence. By constantly demeaning and insulting the child, the narcissist is conditioning them to be dependent on the parent's validation and approval. A grandiose narcissist is generally more open with their insults and abuse, but the covert narcissist is really good at hiding these microaggressions. So they're slowly poisoning you without you even realizing what they're doing. So they administer small doses of poison over a long period of time and they know each child's emotional button. They know your poison. They know exactly how to knock you out and they love to simultaneously pretend to be the one who is going to help you get back up to help solve your problems and resolve the chaos and conflicts that they are coordinating behind the scenes. When it comes to insults, they can be direct and obvious such as what you will see in the upcoming clip. It's his glasses. They make him look like a lizard. Plus, he's self-conscious. Gee, I wonder why. Or the insults can be indirect and more covert, which will oftentimes be played off as though they're trying to help you. Here's a clip to demonstrate what this might look like. I'm always honest with you, aren't I? <laughs> and if I see something that you desperately need help with, like cooking, <laughs> cleaning, <laughs> the children. Some narcissistic parents may also occasionally provide positive reinforcement. They may compliment their children once in a while, and this strategy leaves the children craving that validation and feeling hopeful um, that they may be able to get their parents ongoing long-term approval. This leads to a push-pull dynamic that keeps the children in the game and always trying harder to please the parent. Number two, the narcissistic parent repeatedly violates boundaries. Narcissistic parents consistently violate boundaries in many different ways. For example, they may ask you inappropriate questions and share inappropriate information about themselves or about you to others. Robbie, I'm gonna do a lot of your socks and underpants. Are you wearing today's underpants or yesterday's? <laughs> They're fine, but No, no, let me see. No, 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 no,
Even though this is a funny clip, it shows the mother's total lack of boundaries. She's speaking to her adult son as though he's still a small child. Another way that narcissistic parents may violate your boundaries is by telling you what to do and acting as though they have the right to make decisions for you. What time is it? The show is tonight at no, two. No, no. no, don't worry. I called the theater and I told them you weren't feeling well. I have to go. No, no, let me down. Go with me. In this clip, the mother calls to cancel her daughter's plans and feels justified in making this decision without even consulting her daughter. In the case of a narcissist, even if their own life is in shambles and all of their relationships are problematic, they will act as though they have all of the solutions to your problems and that you need to listen to them or else. Another way a narcissistic parent may violate your boundaries relates to invading your personal space. Here's a clip to demonstrate. <laughs> Again, even though these are humorous clips, you can see the problem with these boundary violations. And if you have a narcissistic parent, you know that they feel entitled to violate your boundaries, to try to control your emotions, your choices, even your thoughts and perceptions. And this is in part because narcissists see their children as tools to be manipulated and used for their own personal needs and gain. Number three, they brag about their children's accomplishments to others but rarely acknowledge their children or support them emotionally in their achievements. Narcissistic parents may use their children's successes to feed their own ego. For example, in public, they're always talking about their child in flattering ways and exaggerating um, what they're doing. But in private, they are often knocking that same child down. When a narcissistic parent praises their child to others, it's often to live through the child um, vicariously or because they want everyone to perceive that their child's um, success is a result of their amazing parenting skills. So in the following clip, you'll see an example of this. Oh, which kid is your kid? Oh, just right there, that one. Uh-huh. The knee cue. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we need to be going soon. He has practice for a piano recital. Mm. His teacher says he's never had such an advanced pupil at his age. Mm. Which one's yours? That's him right there. We had to drag him to the park today because as soon as he gets home from school, all he wants to do is read the entire newspaper. Smart. Now, we all brag on occasion about our children's accomplishments, but there's a fine line between bragging about them and regularly using your children to prop up your ego. Narcissistic parents often feel like they are being overshadowed by their child, which makes them feel envious and insecure. And this often causes them to have to feel like they need to knock the child down, make them feel like they're a disappointment despite doing their best. So let's say you win a race, get the gold medal. The narcissistic parent will brag to everyone around and yet behind closed doors, they're criticizing everything you did, telling you what you need to do better next time. Sometimes in the case of the golden child, the child may be praised and put on a pedestal even in private but it comes with a lot of pressure to be perfect and not let the narcissist down. Number four, emotional manipulation. Narcissists use guilt, fear, and other negative emotions to manipulate everyone, including their children. This can be done verbally or non-verbally. The narcissist feels safe and secure when they know that all of their puppets are playing their parts perfectly. So the narcissistic parent knows each child's emotional buttons. They know exactly what to say to upset them because they installed most of those fear, guilt, and shame buttons, which they push repeatedly whenever they want or need something, even if it's just some entertainment. For example, let's say the narcissistic parents wants you to visit more often and give them more attention. They may say things like, so this is what I get after all I've done for you? or you never call or come over, 
one of these days you're going to come by and I won't be here. Here's a clip to demonstrate. It's my fault that Rory dropped out of Yale. It's my fault that she didn't go back. It's my fault that she's with Logan. It's my fault that she's not happy. It's my fault. It's all my fault. It's not your fault. That's right. It's not my fault. In this clip, the mother wants pity and validation for her feelings. She uses guilt to manipulate her daughter into saying exactly what she wants to hear. Narcissistic parents love to use guilt trips, especially on the most sensitive and empathetic of their children. And they do this to lower the child's self-esteem and keep them emotionally dependent on them so that they don't try to be independent, set boundaries, and take charge of their own lives. The worst thing for the narcissistic parent would be that all of their puppets leave the puppet show. Number five, they compare and play favorites. Comparing and playing favorites is a tactic that narcissists use to diminish their children and lower, again, their self-esteem, their self-worth, their sense of self. Again, maintaining their control. They have no problem pitting one child against the other, as well as against the other parent, keeping family members in competition and in conflict. The narcissistic parent triangulates, plants rotten little seeds in each child's vulnerable little mind, and of course, undermines, discredits, and damages the child's relationship with other family members, with people who could provide them with emotional support, guidance, and love. And of course, the child has no idea that the parent that they trust that is supposed to love and care for them is creating this conflict and chaos in their life by comparing them to others. Here's a quick example. You get a call from your mom with news that your cousin Sarah is pregnant. Your mom says, hey, your cousin Sarah is pregnant and she just finished law school. Isn't she remarkable? And depending on the severity and type of narcissism, as well as your role in the family, your mom might go on to say how your cousin is like the daughter she always wanted, or that Sarah makes her more proud than you ever did. And I'm not suggesting here that, you know, it's not okay to be proud of another family member. But when it comes to a narcissistic parent, they are purposely comparing you to others to make you feel unworthy or to create conflict and competition with others. So even if you're extremely happy in your own life, these comments are aimed to make you feel like you're not good enough. Comparing you to others and playing favorites, pitting you against you know, friends and family is behavior that stems from jealousy, envy, and insecurity. And it is intended to motivate conflict and competition that the narcissist will then pretend to support you in resolving. Children of narcissistic parents are trained to seek approval, validation, and support from the narcissist as they are constantly trying to gain their love and acceptance. But that love is conditional and the conditions are constantly changing. But in essence, the name of this game is pleasing the narcissist and playing by their rules. So if you grew up with a narcissistic parent, you likely are experiencing low self-worth, low self-confidence, a shaky sense of self, and you may even feel fundamentally flawed, unlovable. And if you think that your parent might have NPD and that you are suffering the effects of narcissistic abuse, please contact a mental health professional in your area who can help you process your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and your experience and who can help you set healthy boundaries with your narcissistic parent. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. And I also love to hear about your experiences with a narcissistic parent in the comment section below.